Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Good morning. Hello and welcome to chapel. I'm Claire. I'm a MDiv student in the Interfaith Chaplaincy Program. Um, and when I was in seventh grade, my, uh, my mom brought home two books for me from a book sale at her school. And of course, those first, those two books were the first two books in the Harry Potter series. Uh, Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone, and Harry Potter and the Chamber of Secrets. And I read them voraciously. Uh, I went around the house like one-handed, trying to do everything while still keeping reading because I just couldn't put it down. Um, the years that followed were midnight book release parties. Um, I wore my dad's ministerial robes as, <laughs> as with a Gryffindor patch as uh, wizard robes, of course. Um, and in many ways, I feel like Ron and Harry and Hermione and I grew up together. Um, each new year brought a new adventure and another layer was added to my own story, just like theirs. So these books have become an intensely informative text for me and I revisit them very, very often. Um, they have seen me through some awkward moments in high school, transitions through college, lonely times in new cities, and, and now through my seminary journey as well. Um, and there's just something about this story that has a very special place for me. The possibility of magic, the importance of friendship, the power of love over systems of power. As a young person, I was not aware of the magnitude of these themes, uh, but I have come to understand Harry Potter as a modern exegesis of the Christian story, just as the very smart Reverend Ashley Harness has put it. Um, what was once just a fruitless escape has become a beautiful reminder to do the work of love and justice in the world. So today, I invite all of us to explore Harry Potter texts as a source of light, especially in this time of transition for United Seminary. This is just a small, tiny sampling of what these books have to say about life. Um, and you don't have to be a Harry Potter mega fan um, to be at this chapel. You're very welcome, no matter where you are in your Harry Potter journey. <laughs> um, there's, hopefully, there's hopefully something for everybody here. So um, if you feel called, you can stand and join me in the call to worship. Welcome. Welcome to a new year at Hogwarts. Before we begin our banquet, I would like to say a few words. And here they are. Nitwit. Blubber. Augment. Tweak. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. 
A reading from Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone, Chapter 6, The Journey from Platform 9 and 3 Quarters. Pages 93 and 94 if you're following along. Yes, said Harry. The thing is, the thing is, I don't know how to, how to get onto the platform, he said kingly, and Harry nodded. Not to worry, she said. All you have to do is walk straight at the barrier between platforms 9 and 10. Don't stop, and don't be scared you'll crash into it. That's very important. Best do it at a bit of a run if you're nervous. Go on now, go now before Ron. Uh, okay, said Harry. He pushed his trolley around and stared at the barrier. It looked very solid. He started to walk toward it. People jostled him on their way to platforms nine and 10. Harry walked more quickly. He was going to smash right into that barrier, and then he'd be in trouble. Leaning forward on his cart, he broke into a heavy run. The barrier was coming nearer and nearer. He wouldn't be able to stop. The cart was out of control. He was a foot away. He closed his eyes, ready for the crash. It didn't come. He kept on running. He opened his eyes. A scarlet steam engine was waiting next to a platform packed with people. A sign overhead said, Hogwarts Express, 11 o'clock. Harry looked behind him and saw a wrought iron archway where the barrier had been, with the words platform nine and three quarters on it. He had done it. Excuse me. <sighs> <clears throat> no. Oh, there we are. <laughs> Harry Potter and the Goblet of Fire, Chapter 23, The Yule Ball, page 40, uh, 417 through 418, when the book started getting very long. <clears throat> Vel Dumbledore said Karkaroff, displaying his yellowing teeth to their fullest extent. We are all protective of our private domains, are we not? Do we not jealously guard the halls of learning that have been entrusted to us? Are we not right to be proud that we alone know our school secrets and the right to protect them? <clears throat> Oh, I would never dream of assuming I know all Hogwarts secrets, Igor, said Dumbledore amicably. <laughs> Only this morning, for instance, I took a wrong turning on the way to the bathroom and found myself in a beautifully proportioned room I have never seen before, containing a really rather magnificent collection of chamber pots. When I went back to investigate more closely, I discovered that the room had vanished, but I must keep an eye out for it. Possibly it is only accessible at 5.30 in the morning, or it may only appear at the quarter moon, or when the seeker has an exceptionally full bladder. Harry snorted into his plate of goulash. Percy frowned, but Harry could have sworn Dumbledore had given him a very small wink. <laughs> uh, thank you, Professor Trelawney and Dementor friend for the readings today. So when I was in college, uh, I worked at the university's child care center with the 18 month olds to the three year olds. And we worked very hard to make transitions as easy as possible. We would give them reminders and countdowns to the end of the current activity. We would sing songs as rituals to take us from one thing to the other. And we would practice and we would talk through all the steps with felt boards, uh, but transitions were still hard. And some resulted in tantrums and in tears. But we would keep singing our little transition songs and eventually the whole class made it to the next thing. So united, consider this your five-minute warning to your transition. 
<laughs> your reminder and countdown before we move to our next new thing. Throughout the Harry Potter universe, we see the magic around transitions, the rituals that must be performed before, one, before entering one space from another. A series on taps of certain bricks opens the way from a pub in the muggle world to the magical Diagon Alley. Passwords must be uttered by students in order to enter their house dormitories behind portraits or statues. Boats across the lake and apparently horseless carriages transition the students from the train stop up to the Hogwarts castle. Transi transitions and rituals carry people from one space to another, from the muggle reality to the magical world. Harry was ready to follow the directions of his ticket on the Hogwarts Express and enter platform nine and three quarters, but he couldn't figure out how to get there. He wanted to ask a guard, a, a person in authority to get the answer, but he knew he would only be met with ridicule. He was reaching panic until Mrs. Weasley came over to encourage him and guide him through the portal. With the help of someone who would later become like a second mother, Harry was able to abuse leave his abusive life behind him and discover new possibilities. As we prepare to leave this space to our new home on University Avenue, we have already depended on ritual and tradition to carry us there. In our preparations, our community dreamed together about the design of our new space. We had dance parties. We held a service of remembrance where we created symbols of connection with prairie grass bouquets. We blessed the new space with secret messages and blessings that will live in the walls of that space. We have had our own Mrs. Weasleys come up next to us to guide us from the precipice of United in New Brighton to United on University. Committees, professional consultants, student representatives, all have been available to us as we say goodbye to the world that we have known and welcomed all the possibilities that lie ahead of us when we break through the barrier to platform nine and three quarters and step off the Hogwarts Express to 767 North Eustace. It takes courage to leave the old behind and find something new. Well, Harry knew that his uncle Vernon, Aunt Petunia and cousin Dudley were not the makings of a loving family. They were what he had. We at United know that the internet is spotty the layout is not ideal and the furnace lacking, but <laughs> we have also made community in these hallways and experienced moments of clarity, sparks of learning and insights in the classrooms down the hallway, or maybe right here in these very seats. Where we have been feels comfortable. It feels nostalgic. It may not be perfect, but it has been our home for a while now. Spaces, houses, castles, schools, they can take on a life of their own. Harry and his friends know to hop over the disappearing stair step on their way to class. They come to anticipate Peeves the poltergeist and discover secret passages to the village next door, Hogsmeade. As we become more intimate with a space, it becomes more dear to us. Here at United, we know that we should wear layers to class to keep warm, or if needed, shed them, especially when we meet in Steckle. We have our favorite mugs from the Context Cafe. We know that Lee watches us from above as we walk through the library. We know that to get the internet to work, you have to walk out of the chapel and down the hallway first. As we have found out all these nooks and crannies of this place, it becomes more and more special to us and harder to let go. Yet, we cannot think that we have learned the fullness of what this building holds. Dumbledore, who is at Hogwarts as a student, a teacher, and the headmaster, doesn't flatter himself to have known all that Hogwarts has to share. While looking for a bathroom, he finds what is later dubbed the Room of Requirement, a magical room in Hogwarts that presents the passerby with whatever they need, Though Dumbledore is not certain how it works just yet, he's thrilled and excited by the mystery of it. Hogwarts always has an unlikely portrait or a hidden stairwell to share with those who are curious enough to keep looking. 
The visiting headmaster from the wizarding school, Karkaroff, on the other hand, wants to keep his school's location private and his teaching methods under wraps. But by isolating, he's keeping his students from interacting with other young witches and wizards, and he misses possibilities of new knowledge that might be right in front of him. His scarcity mindset keeps him from discovering new things about his work and home. Dumbledore reminds us to stay alert and curious. United, this building that we are now in doesn't have moving staircases that we know of or rooms of beautiful collections of chamber pots that we know of, but it will take on a new life when it is filled with the young students of Global Academy. They will find new uses for these rooms and hallways, maybe in ways that we've never dreamed of, just as we too will bring new life to our new neighborhood in St. Paul. Thus far, this all seems pretty rosy, right? <laughs> With the encouragement of a Mrs. Weasley, you can break through to new barriers and discover a whole new world of magic, a world where you are accepted and find belonging. You can find a new home. You can encounter change and newness with the absurdity and joy that Dumbledore does when he welcomes his new students to a new year at Hogwarts. But let's be real about what can happen when we cross through into the unknown. In addition to unicorns and Quidditch and friendly half-giants, there's a darker side to the world that Harry encounters. Each year he finds himself face to face with the one who killed his parents. He's a marked target for the dark wizard Voldemort. He's required to battle Dementors, the very embodiment of depression and hopelessness. Creatures that literally suck out one's soul, leaving them feel like they can never be happy again. He has to deal with corrupt governments, being shunned for speaking the truth, and systems that esteem wizards over all other beings. Crossing through platform nine and three quarters isn't leaving all of that behind. It's still there. Hogwarts and the wizarding world are not the safe havens that we would like them to be. In the final book of the series, spoiler, but it's also been published for 10 years, but um, <laughs> uh, Harry leaves. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, well, in that book, Harry leaves the school and he sets out to destroy Voldemort piece by piece. He hardly has a plan. He doesn't really know what he's looking for and he gets rather short tempered to say the least. By now he's experienced real loss. The death of his beloved pet owl, the deaths of his godfather, his mentor and his schoolmate loom over him. And without Hermione, he would have been a goner back in book one. But through this time, Harry questions why he's even out there. His mission and purpose, a muddled mess. The friendships that have meant more to him than anything else in the world are strained and tested. Stepping into the unknown, crossing the threshold can be a dangerous, lonely, and ominous journey. Often these difficult transitions are foisted upon us the death of a loved one, the loss of a home, a grave illness, surviving trauma. These are doorways we never wanted to enter. It takes more than a smile from Mrs. Weasley to pass through these doorways into a new normal. I'm not going to pretend that I have an answer that will solve these hurts and fortify us for our next step out the door. But I will say that my time here at United has made me braver to take that step. United has helped me recognize and respond when others have been launched into the unknown without their consent. I've been met with love and support when I've had my own experiences being shoved through to a new reality. We've been introduced to stories in our sacred texts of all kinds that echo our human reality, and that's not nothing. As the semester ends and we round the corner with graduation in sight, some of us are preparing for a new journey, a transition from the world of academia and papers and final projects to one of job hunting or 
entrepreneurial ministry or church appointments or chaplaincy residencies or nonprofit work, we're getting ready to walk through the doorway from the safe world we have known here at United to the unknown that lies ahead. I'm hopeful, however, that the portrait hole doorway or magical barrier between platforms nine and 10 will be filled with the wonder, magic, friendships, and joy that Harry found. May it be so. <laughs> Would you join me in prayer? God who shows up in surprising places, whose sacredness is present even in our nerdy pleasures, we offer our gratitude to you. Be with us as we transition from this sacred space back out through the platform into the muggle world. Help us channel our gifts to do the work of love in the world. Help us hold on to hope in the midst of horror and despair. Help us recognize those symbols of friendship that surround us. May we be like Harry, Ron, and Hermione, working together with their classmates, mentors, and families to build a society on love over hate, friendship over fear. Help us name the Voldemorts in our lives so we can meet with them with as much courage as them. May we be open to the magic of the world that surrounds us. Amen. So if this hasn't been nerdy enough for you, we're going to do a song about Harry Potter. <laughs> um, so I'll teach you the chorus. Um, and then you can come in with me when we get there. So um, I'll teach it to you. These days are dark, but we won't fall. You try that. These days are dark, but we won't fall. My turn. We'll stick together through it all. Try that. We'll stick together through it all. These days are dark, but we won't fall. You try it. These days are dark, but we won't fall. Let's put it together. These days are dark, but we won't fall. We'll stick together through it all. These days are dark, but we won't fall. Oh, that sounds so beautiful. <laughs> All right, I have some verses and then you're gonna come in. Voldemort is back, he's come alive. These times are dark, but I can see a light. I can see it in your eyes. We got Sirius Black, and he's pretty serious now that the Dark Lord's back. We got the whole Weasley family with Dad helping at the ministry. With Hagrid and Madame Maxine, I'm sure we'll be on the winning team. Here we go. These days are dark, but we won't fall. We'll stick together through it all. These days are dark, but we won't fall again. These days are dark, but we won't fall. We'll stick together through it all. These days are dark, but we won't fall. My turn. McGonagall and Severus Snape and Professor Lupin will be back before it's too late. We got Ron and Hermione, and nothing can take my best friends away from me. And with Albus Dumbledore, I'm sure. We'll be on the winning team. Here we go. These days are dark, but we won't fall. We'll sit together through it all. These days are dark, but we won't fall. These days are dark, but we won't fall. We'll sit together through it all. These days are dark, but we won't fall. Next slide. These days are dark, but we won't fall. We'll stick together through it all. What 
comes will come, and when it does, we'll meet it with all of our courage. These days are dark, but we won't fall. We'll stick together through it all. What comes will come, and when it does, we'll meet it with all of our courage. And the world is beautiful, just look around. And the world is beautiful, just look around. And the world is beautiful, just look around. And the world is beautiful, just look at all your friends. <laughs> Harry Potter, just um, like in this muggle world, we know that chocolate has healing powers. <laughs> so as Madame Pomfrey says, well, he should have some chocolate at the very least. So um, as you go on your journey out in the world, please take some fortifying chocolate with you. And thank you for uh, indulging me <laughs> this morning. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. 